Hi, this is Wayne Zell and welcome to Blueprint for Wealth, your fast paced video blog, video cast that's designed to help you realize your personal dreams of wealth and freedom. It's brought to you by Zell Law, a law firm located in Reston, Virginia and serving clients all across the United States. If you'd like to know more about us, visit us on the web at zelllaw.com. Today, I'd like to welcome my special guest, Gary Helt, who's a CPA, he's an entrepreneur, and he's a financial expert located in Gambrills, Maryland. Welcome, Gary. Welcome to the show. Thanks, Wayne. I appreciate uh, you having me on. Uh, absolutely. He's the owner of Small Business Advisors, and his firm influences Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. Uh, clients all over this area. It's a big area, and we, we cover a lot of different businesses. He's got over 30 years of experience and he authored a book called The Right Team, The Right Plan, A Winning Approach to Growing Your Business and Your Wealth, and hosts the Grow Your Business and Grow Your Wealth podcast. First of all, Gary, show us your book, because I, sure. I think it's uh, it's kind of cool. It's cool to write books. I like writing books. Yeah. And you've got number one bestseller status. Tell us about the book real quick. Yeah, so, um, so what I talk about in the book is – um, you know, making sure that you pick a financial team um, and you're picking the right team to help you implement your plan. Um, and what I've done is I, I've done some different interviews um, and I've taken those interviews and, and have them here in the book and really talk again, talking about, you know, make sure you, you, you let your team of financial experts talk because that's what's really going to help you get ahead is by letting all of us talk together about who things. should be on that team. Um, I, you know, I think that, you know, your, your corporate attorney, um, you should have your, your CPA, you should have your, your financial advisor. Um, you know, I like business coaches. I think you should have a business coach on there. Okay. Um, you, your insurance broker is another good one to have on there. Um, and, uh, you know, if you have other people that are, that are part of your business and, and your internal, um, executive team, they would also be good to be on there. So that's, that's good advice. And, uh, maybe even your banker, uh, who knows? Correct. Some bankers yep. shouldn't be included. Um, just kidding. 1999, you started your firm. What, who inspired you to, to start the firm? What, what was your uh, your background before that? Sure, um, <laughs> going way back um, when I first when I was when I was young, um, I, I honestly I, I wanted to be an FBI agent, um, and that's what really got me into the accounting side of things. Um, when I was in high school, one of my football coaches had me take a bookkeeping class that he that he taught. And I mean, to me, it was like the tricks. I just, I saw it and it just, it makes sense to me. Okay. Uh, so because of that, it, that's the route that, that, that I took, um, getting my accounting degree and thought, okay, hey, I'm, I'm going to graduate college. I'll go apply to get an FBI and, 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 you know, go out there and catch all the bad guys. Uh, <laughs> well, when, when I graduated college and, and, you know, 1990, the um, FBI was on a hiring freeze because they had some um, hiring practice problems um, at the time. So they, they kind of had the hiring freeze on. So at that point, I'm like, well, I need to start my career, right. work for a very, very small accounting firm and then work for a, a mechanical contractor for a couple of years. And then start working for nonprofits and then some for profits. And they got to the point where it was like, OK. I'm helping a lot of people make a lot of money and I'm not benefiting um, because, again, it was always the salespeople and people like that that were getting, you know, the big fat bonuses and stuff. And I was the one putting in all the long hours and everything else. So I said, hey, it's, it's time time to go out and, and, and start my own, uh, you know, my own firm. Um, so it's been about 25 years since you started it. How's it gone? Um you know, the, it, it's interesting when you say you're going to start, everybody tells you, oh, I got all these people for you. And yeah. then you go out there and you start and, you know, it's kind of crickets, um, <laughs> you know, so it, it's take it's taken a while to to develop. And my God, I've learned so much um, over time. And 
and really, um, you know, looking at my my team of people that I put together and have just seen the evolution of that because it's changed for me because, uh, you know, I outgrew some of the people. Um, some of the people decided to, to take their careers in a different uh, direction. So so it has really changed. And then also, you know, just business in itself, you know, has changed. So um, it's it's been a, a, a it's definitely been a journey. Um, a, a great learning experience. Um, and, and, um, I like the flexibility that it's given me to be able to do some other things, um, you know, outside of just, you know, the business and, and, and personal life. So, um, so you know. you've, you've managed to grow small business advisors significantly since you bought it. Yeah. Um, and you have a high client retention rate. Share your approach on building long lasting client relationships and what strategies you believe are the most effective in keeping clients uh, to yourself. Sure. Um, I, I think something that, that's very important that, that uh, a lot of, um, you know, CPAs don't get is that we need to listen and really listen to what the client is saying that they want and what they need. So many times we're, the CPAs are very quick to just answer the question, okay, boom, 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 out the door. It's like, well, it's not a, a wash, rinse and repeat thing. Everybody's situation is yeah. different. Um, and it's funny how lots of times CPAs say, okay, everybody's situation is different, but then they treat everybody the same. Um, I, I feel that, oh. you know, you really need to, sit and listen to the client, listen to what they are, um, what they want to accomplish. Because to me, depending on what they want to accomplish tells me, you know, how their business should be set up, what type of retirement plan they should have, what kind of benefits should be involved, what type of assets mm -hmm. should they be purchasing. So it, it, it really helps me put together a picture for them to be able to, um, you know, use what they're saying to help them. Because to me, I want to help them grow. I want to see them succeed. Um, Cause to me, that's something that that's important. Um, even if it were to be that, Hey, look, they outgrow me in their service because they need so much more time and it wouldn't be cost effective for me to, to continue doing everything for them. Yes, I continue helping them with the big picture, but but not the necessarily the day-to-day -day side of things. So um, it, it, like I said, I, I just think it's important to, to listen. That's good advice. Tell me, uh, what services is small business providing, small business advisors providing to its clients? Sure, today? so, um, you know, we do personal taxes, um, we do business taxes, um, we do some small uh, trust states um, on, and a few nonprofits. Um, we do uh, bookkeeping. We'll process payroll for the smaller clients. Um, we do a lot of tax planning. I think that that's an area that um, a lot of people, uh, CPAs say that they do, but they truly don't because they're not putting together a comprehensive plan. They're give them that that advice at the end of the year. Hey, go buy a vehicle over six thousand pounds so you can go write it all off. Um, and you know, so we're doing that <laughs> that more that tax plan. We do bookkeeping uh, for people and help them uh, manage that that side. Um, I we we do provide some. Um, uh, I'm going to say external CFO, um, you know, services for clients. Um, and, and we sit on a couple of different boards, uh, you know, for some of our clients also. Well, that's a really wide range of services. Mm -hmm. So how do you keep on top of all the different things that you're doing, not only in managing all the, the client issues, but uh, keeping up to date on the latest and greatest developments? I have awesome people that work with me. Um, uh, my team <laughs> that I have are, are, are awesome. Um, you know, we, we all want to learn. Um, so it's, it's great that, that all of us have that initiative to, to try to, um, you know, to try to learn more, um, you know, and again, it's it, our investment in technology. I mean, we, we definitely have a, I don't want to say we're on the cutting edge, but we really leverage, 
um, you know, our, our technology to be able to be more efficient in what we're doing. How do you do that? What technologies are you using that makes you more efficient? So uh, one of the one of the things that we use is we use client portals, which a lot of people use as just as like document storage. But we use right. that more to communicate with our clients, providing documents, receiving documents. Um, so they're not having to, OK, either I got to come to the office or I got to mail it in or whatever we right. can you know, upload. it, So it's much quicker um, you know, from, from, from that standpoint, um, you know, using QuickBooks online has been something that I'll tell you, I went kicking and screaming because it was so different than what I was used to. Um, yes. but you know, it's so much more secure than emailing back and forth the files or sending a disc or, or whatever, yes. um, methods you were using before. So we're able to, being the system at the same time that the clients are, um, we're able to have up to date information and we're, you know, so the client, when, when we need to have meetings because a client wants to, to do something, we're able to look at the same data at the same time. Um, do you, um, do you have any good stories of how you've saved a client a lot of money, um, ooh. because of the tax planning that you've done for yeah, them? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I'll tell you, I mean, we, for businesses that we have helped um, and put together tax plans, we typically cut their cut their tax bill by about forty percent. Um, how? So it's, what have you done? Give us some, sure, give us some examples. Sure. I mean, you know, it's, the, uh, the you know, can understand how, yeah, how you guys do. It. Uh, you know, some of it is is going back and and looking at their entity structure. I mean, you know, when you guys do a lot of of you know formations and making sure people are set up properly, not just for today, but then to be able to grow and, and exit later on. But we have right. found lots of times people aren't set up right. You know, they they started out where they were working on weekends doing plumbing or or whatever it was that they're doing. Next thing you know, they have a full fledged business. They're making a couple hundred thousand dollars but they're still filing a Schedule C because nobody's ever told them. And then again, the, going back to the CPA, wash, rinse and repeat. They, it's, it's you know, more transactional. So they're just not necessarily giving the, the advice, um, you know, so. So tell us a story. Tell them to give, give me a story. Yeah, of, I mean, of, it, I mean literally, a, I had a plumber, you know, that, that he started okay. out on his own, um, hired employees and everything else. You know, he was profiting about, you know, three hundred and fifty thousand dollars um, and he's following the schedule. Make a C. lot of money. Yeah. Yeah. Um, <laughs> you know, so he's filing the schedule C and, you know, looking at that, switching him over to a set up an LLC. So he has a liability protection because, you know, obviously he didn't have any. Um, but right. then, but then looking at it from a tax perspective, having him take a paycheck. Um, being able to start up a retirement plan for him and his employees, um, you know, really helped him be able to cut back on those uh, on those taxes. So it saved him on the self-employment tax. Granted, he was over the Social Security limit, so it's smaller, but it's still three percent is three percent. Um, so yes, we're still is. looking at that, but then looking at. Hey, if I set up my retirement plan inside my S Corp, I get to deduct that before the money flows onto my personal tax return. Um, right. And then now Instead we actually after, have right. with him because he's continued growing the business. We've actually set up a defined benefit plan for him to go over top of his um, uh, 401k that he has. So between those, there's some significant savings. Well, do you uh, do you help the clients actually set up these defined benefit plans or do you have people that you go to to do this? Yeah, stuff? So I, I I know the plans very well, but I have an act, you know, outside actuarials, TPAs that actually put together the documents, put together plans, do all the testing, do all of the, the filing. And, and that's, you know, earlier you asked the question about efficiency and stuff. That's one of the ways that I stay efficient. I don't get bogged down in everything. I know a lot of the concepts and stuff, and I bring in the, the experts at it to be able to do it. Just like, you know, 
you know, with what you do, Wayne, Wayne, with helping people with exit and stuff like that, we call people right. in like you to help with that side of it, to help with the cash balance. Um, you know, this plumber, I mean, we, we he um, ended up buying a building that he's got part of it is he's renting to his S Corp. Part of it, okay. he has other people um, that are that are in it, you know, renting from him. So when he bought right. it, we had him do a cost segregation study. So then that way he's able to write off more of the depreciation here in year one through seven as compared to over thirty nine. Um, and a lot of people are so going to in, in English because a yep. lot of people don't that's, know these rules. That's, uh, I'm yep. going to slow you down for a second. So, I know what you're talking about, but when you're talking about a cost segregation study, you're you're telling the, the client is identifying pieces of tangible personal property within a building, correct? That can be segregated because it's separately identifiable and you can write that off over a faster period of time, right? Correct. Correct. So what we do is we'll have a, um, a an engineering firm come in. If it's a, if the building's already built, they will come in, they will go through the building, they will take a study and look at, and they will assign costs to the electrical system, to the, to the light fixtures, to the plumbing, yep. to the HVAC, yep. concrete, everything. So they do all of that. So what happens is, is that instead of taking one thirty ninth of everything every year, because real estate's depreciable over thirty nine years for, on a yes, straight line. Yes, for commercial basis. real estate, right. you're you're writing right. it off over thirty nine years. So now instead of that, we're able to take those individual items that have been broken out in that cost segregation study. And we're able to write, like I said, some of it off over one year, some of it over That's three huge. and so forth. So again, you think about, I just spent a lot of money buying this building or this property. Now I'm able to expense more of it today, which will yeah. help me recover some of my cash from it. Does it cost a lot to do a cost segregation study as compared to the benefit that the client derives from it? No. I mean, you know, when you really look at, depending on the size of the property, you could say right. that, um, you know, I think when, when this gentleman did it, and I forget how many square, square feet he has, um, you know, I had another one that we did was a daycare and we did it kind of as they actually built it. So it made it, you know, super simple because they had all the invoices and stuff. But I, I want to say it cost them seventy five hundred. Um, and this was okay. just two years ago. Um, okay. You know, so because of that, but then they're right. The, the amount of um, tax savings that, that they got was probably, you know, five times that in year one. So to me, awesome. you know, plus they got awesome. the write off the cost of the cost segregation study. So, you know, right. it was exactly. pretty significant. Unless you have to capitalize it as part of the building. Well, there you go. Um, <laughs> I'll, get, I'll get past that one. <laughs> um, community involvement. You're, you're really actively involved in your community. You give through a charity for the kids. Right. Um, tell us about for the kids and how this particular effort has integrated your business values, but also the impact it's had on your team and on your community. Yeah. So, um, you know, go, goes back to, to 2000. So, you know, I started, started, um, you know, the business and then about three months after I did, my friend Mike started up his own uh, insurance brokerage business. Um, and, you know, when, when he started up, I said, Hey, I got space. Why don't you come in, help save some of your money, help defer some of my costs and so forth and and so forth. So so that's what we did. And one day over lunch, we were talking and I said to him, it's like, look, I think we need to do something to give back to the community, because I think as a business owner, we you know, community supports us by giving us jobs and, and everything else. I think we need to 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 give back to the community. Um, and so we started kind of talking through it. We both like playing golf. So we were like, Hey, well, why not do a golf tournament? And then we can give the proceeds. Um, and, and for the, so we found it for the kids and what for the kids is about is we, um, 
we raise money for a local family that has a child that has a serious illness. Um, so what we do is, you know, we start first year we started out, we had 40 of our best friends get together and everybody's name was thrown into a hat and Gary, you're playing with Wayne. And we went out and it was a two person scramble. Um, and we played against it. Well, we've evolved over the time and, you know, got to where we were doing a four person, uh, you know, scramble. And then, you know, with that, we've started selling out. And then now basically this year, our, our tournament's the first Monday in August and we sold out our tournament out in less than 36 hours. Um, wow. And how much money do you give to charity as a result of these? Tournaments? So, so we, depending on um, the year um, we have at this point, we're averaging about twenty seven thousand dollars a year that we give to uh, give to the beneficiary. Um, That's wonderful. We, That's wonderful. Yeah, this is this is happens to be our 25th year, um, you know, in existence. Um, and we are we're also going to do something um, at Halloween with along with Truman Charities, where we're going to have a Halloween party. Um, and with that Halloween party, all the proceeds from the Halloween party um, is going to go to the family also. Um, so awesome. we got got a couple of things going with that. Sounds great. Um, I'm going to switch gears sure. a little bit, talk about financial strategy and, and some of the challenges that your clients and other businesses are facing today. What what are some of the common challenges that you see businesses facing in developing their financial strategies today? And how do we overcome them? Yeah, I, I think one of the things that that happened with, with COVID and coming out of COVID, money was so cheap. And, you know, you could borrow money, you you know, people, you know, were, were doing a lot of leveraging and things like that because because money was so cheap. Um, and then now, you know, obviously rates rates have been been creeping up. And I think some people overextended themselves and then now it's kind of come back. So really trying to work with the with the clients on their cash flow and trying to get, you know, debt paid down and stuff like that. So they're not um, spending spending too much on it. Um, but was it mostly variable debt yes. where the in interest rate was increasing? So now we're over way over five, six, seven percent, depending on what kind of debt you've got. And that's really expensive. Yeah, isn't it? yeah, exactly. Some of some of the people we were lucky because we saw that rates were starting to creep back up and it, they ended up refinancing and got a fixed rate in terms. So they're so they're getting it, uh, you know, getting things paid off. Um, I did see. A lot of people um, get the the SBA idle loans, um, yep. and some people thought, "Oh, well, you know, they're going to forgive this just like they forgot forgiven everything else." Well, they haven't. Interest rates yep. are really low, so you so you know you can't can't complain too much, um, right? But we're finding that 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 some of them are looking at okay, trying to pay this back. Um, you know, is, is significant. And, and we're trying to, some of it, we're trying to get them to pay off, you know, pay, make extra payments on it to try to get it down. Because obviously in those first few years, um, uh, the interest is high. One of the things I do have to say is anybody who has, you know, the, the, the idle loans with the SBA is because they, are, they aren't really sending out statements saying, hey, this is how much interest you paid us. So you need to be proactive with your amortization schedule, but you can also reach out to them and ask them for what it is. So just make sure you document it because- Can you prepay it? You can prepay it, you know. Without penalty. Without, correct. Um, That's important to know. Yeah, so, so, so I mean, with, with some of the, because I've I've had clients um, that, that I've picked up, you know, in the past six months that when I looked at the, their tax return, their corporate tax return, their interest from their uh, from their loan wasn't on there because they never received anything, never gave it to the CPA. CPA never asked about it. Right. So that that's one of the one of the areas. The other thing is is really looking at the money that you're spending and the money I'm spending. Is it earning any income for me? So when I, people are buying assets, is that asset earning 
income for me because so many people, like I said, hey, buy that car at the end of the year. It's like, well, what are you going to do with that car? You already got three. You can't drive all three. <laughs> what good does it do you? So it's not, let's right. just not spend money to spend money because you got debt to pay down. We can put money in retirement. There, there's a bunch of different things that we can do to reduce the tax bill without just sinking money into an asset that isn't going to do anything for you. Or that's depreciating. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's good advice. Looking at um, tax planning. Planning is something, yeah. and that's the big thing I harp on is planning, planning, planning. Because if you plan and things happen, COVID happens or anything else, you lose your key salesperson, whatever it is, if I've done a plan and put it together, I may, I know where I can change things, just like a budget. If you have a budget and you know, you lose a division or you lose something, I'm easily able to plug in and make the switches or suddenly the, the business booms. I know what I need to do to, to, to duplicate things. Exactly. Last question for you today. We're talking with Gary Helt, who is the owner, founder, uh, proprietor of uh, Small Business Advisors in Gambrels, Maryland. And, you know, Gary, you're an entrepreneur. I'm an entrepreneur. What advice would you give a young, aspiring entrepreneur today? Don't be afraid to go out. I mean, step out, step outside your comfort. Um, you know, Take and, a and I forget who said it. it may have been Tony Robbins said it. Um, he said, you know, become comfortable being uncomfortable because if you're uncomfortable, that means you're pushing yourself. Be comfortable doing that because if you're uncomfortable, then, then you're starting to challenge yourself and that's the way to, to, to get better and, and to go out there. Don't be afraid. Um, you know, there, there's a difference between, you know, being risky and taking risk. Being risky to me is just throwing the hell to the wind and going and not not having yeah. a plan, not knowing, you know, where, where the safety spots are and stuff like that. Taking risk means you've thought about it. And I don't want you to 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 paralyze yourself by overthinking, but you've thought about it. You've put together your plan and, and you're ready to execute it. And you have those stop gaps. You have your team that we talk about. You know, making there sure we show us that book again one more sure. time. Um, Where can we get this book? So Gary? it's it, right. You, you have it. It's on Amazon. Um, okay. You know that that you're able to get in. Um, I think it's just one of those things. Have the right team. Have the right people helping you. Um, lots of times, you know, pick that that good business coach. I'm going to tell you one of the best piece of information somebody gave me years ago was when you pick somebody to be your business coach um, or, or that person that holds you accountable from your business stuff. You know, lots of times people have the board of directors to do that. Yep. Is it can't be your mom, it can't be your dad, can't be your brother, your sister, or your best friend. It's got to be somebody that's going to push you and make you very uncomfortable, make you answer the questions that you really don't want to answer. And that's right. probably one of the best pieces of advice that, that I was given before I went into business. So don't be afraid to take risks. Get a good team around you and get a good business coach to help you achieve your goals and objectives. Gary, if people want to get in touch with you, how do they how do they find you? Sure. Um, you can you can find us on the Web, uh, www.sbadvisors.cc, Charlie, Charlie. Or you can give us a call here at the office, 410-721-6000, option number two. Um, you can also you know, catch our podcast on, uh, on YouTube. Um, and What's the podcast called? It's called uh, Grow Your Business, Grow Your Wealth. Um, and, and I think it's got a lot of professionals, good professionals, just like you, Wayne, uh, on, on, on this show uh, and, and really – help educate business owners and, and different strategies. Excellent. Thank you for being a special guest on Blueprint for Wealth today. I really appreciate you. I really appreciate uh, you letting me be on here, Wayne. Thank you. Absolutely. And stay tuned for another special guest on Blueprint for Wealth. Thanks for listening.